In this video, we're going to talk about the normal probability distribution. Let's start by discussing the normal curve. A normal curve is used to model a symmetric distribution. That's when the left half of the distribution of the curve and the right half are mirror images or approximately mirror images. In this case, the mean is equal to the median and both are the center of the curve. If we try to understand how normal curve can approximate histogram, then we just need to think, and we have to think that the total overcounted area, that's all that empty space under the normal curve, is equal or approximately equal to the total undercounted area, that's this regions um, that kind of like sticking out of the normal curve. But as we think this way, we will understand why the total area on the normal curve is equal to 1. And in general, the total area under the normal curve is the very important piece of information that we're going to be working with. And this is how we think about it. So, area under a normal curve within certain interval represents proportion. Proportion of data values in that interval. But then remember, we, when we learned about probability, we learned that probability is the same as proportion, right, or relative frequency. So that means that area on the normal curve can also be represented or interpreted as probability. It represents probability that the randomly selected data value is in that interval. So area has two meanings, proportion, but since proportion is the same as probability, then it's also going to mean probability. We said that area on the normal curve is 1, but normal curves can have different shapes. And this is the example of two different normal curves. As you can see, one is taller and one is wider, right? So the one that is taller, the blue one, that normal curve has, um, or that distribution, has smaller standard deviation. Remember, standard deviation measures spread of the distribution, so it has a smaller standard deviation. It means that data values are closer to each other and closer to the center for this distribution. Now, the green normal curve represents distribution with larger standard deviation, so we can see how data is more spread out for this distribution. But the total area under each normal curve, green or blue, it's still 1. Better understand this, you can think about the normal curve as the amount of salt. If you have same amount of salt here, then no matter what kind of shape you make out of that salt, like a taller tower or you smash it down and now it's wider but not as tall, well, the amount of salt is not going to change, right? So that's the idea about the area under the normal curve. It always equals 1, no matter how wide or tall the normal curve is. Let's refresh the empirical rule. Remember, so according to the empirical rule, we know that Within one standard deviation of the mean, so mean is here right in the middle, right? Um, we're looking at the sample mean. <clears throat> For the population mean, it's going to be the same idea. Um, so within one standard deviation of the mean, so I make one step to the right and one step to the left, and my step is standard deviation, something that measures the spread. In this range, we have 68% of the data values. Now, if we make two steps to the right and to the left, and each step is standard deviation, so two standard deviations to the right, two standard deviations to the left, then within this interval, we're going to have 95% of all data values. And then finally, within three standard deviations of the mean, we have almost 100%, so it's 99.7% of data values. That's the way we just said that it's in terms of proportions, right? So 68% of data, 95% of data, 99.7% of data, that's uh, proportions. We can also describe empirical rule, first of all, in terms of z-scores and probabilities. So let's try it again, but now we're going to describe that in terms of z-scores and probabilities. So, so remember, our z-score represents the number of standard deviations the value is above or below the mean. If we're one standard deviation below the mean, then z-score is negative 1. So that's, um, that's z-scores. But then also interpreting the proportion as probability gives us the following. 
the probability that a randomly selected observation has z-score between negative 1 and 1 is 0.68. And then the probability that, probability that a randomly selected observation has a z-score between negative 2 and 2 is 0.95. And then the probability that a randomly selected observation has z-score between negative 3 and 3 is 0.997. Right? So we can find probability, certain probabilities um, that observations observation is within certain interval. But when we use the empirical rule, we have limits. Right? Because everything is in terms of 1, 2, or exactly 3 standard deviations, above or below the mean. But what if we're inter interested to find, let's say, what is the probability that a randomly selected observation is between negative 1.5 and positive 1.5 z-scores? Right? So somewhere in between those values. Can we do that? Or um, let's say 1.7. Or 2.3 if we use those values how do we find area on the normal curve in those intervals and um, how do we interpret that area is proportional probability well the good news is that we're able to do that and we have to go beyond of the uh, beyond the empirical rule and either use technologies calculator for example or special tables so let's try this example it says, find the probability that a z-score randomly selected from the standard normal distribution is less than negative 1.35. So notice that we're not using this kind of z-score when we describe the empirical rule, right? Let's see how we can do it. Um, first of all, here's the picture. If the horizontal line here represents z-scores, then right in the middle at the center we're going to have z score zero remember z score is the number of standard deviations away from the mean but right at the center here we have mean itself right so it means that at the mean z score is zero where is zero standard deviations away from the mean but here is that negative z score negative 1.35 and the question is to find probability that z score randomly selected is less than this value and that's why this area to the left of negative 1.35 is highlighted remember we just talked about how area under the normal curve can be interpreted as proportion and as probability but how do we find this area well for that we're going to use what's called normal distribution table um, I hope you have, an, you have that table in front of you so we can learn how to use it together. So that table has two sides. As you look at the table, you'll see that the first column on one side has negative values. And on the other side, the first column has positive values. Well, these are z-scores. We know that z-scores can be either positive or negative, right? If it's above the mean, it's positive. If it's below the mean, it's negative. Now, the first column is z-score. Now, what is the first row? Well, the first row, it's also part of this score because this is how we're going to split it apart. Um, if Z score is negative 1.35, and that's, that's the one we're using in our example, then this number we're going to split into two parts. We're going to split it into the whole part before decimal point and the tenth part. So it's one, one digit right after the decimal point. Plus, and then we're going to separate the hundredth part. So that's the second digit after the decimal point. So technically it's 0 0.05. But you know, you can think about it as just the last digit. Like that. Now, where do we locate those numbers in the table? The first column of the table represents the whole part of the z score and the first digit. So we have negative 1.35 so that's what we need to find in the first column and of course we have to be on the side of the table where we see negative z-scores right so make sure your table is on the correct side so in the first column try to find negative 1.3 and now the second digit after the decimal point it's same as 500 we should find in the first row so we have zero as a second digit one as a second digit two three four five okay so that's our case right um so find the column that says 0 0.05 if you put together negative 1.3 and then 0 0.05 you're going to obtain the z-score we're looking at and 
what is the rest in the table? What are those numbers? Well, in the in this table, these numbers represent areas to the left of the corresponding z-score. So in other words, if we continue with our digits here, with our numbers, um, the place where row negative 1.3, that's the yellow row, and the column 0 0.05, that's the green column, where they intersect, that number, in this case it's 0 0.0885, that number represents area under the normal curve to the left of that z-score, that number. So that means that this pink area on the picture is 0 0.0885, but then that area we're going to interpret as probability. So we're going to say that probability that the z-score randomly selected from a standard normal distribution is less than negative 1.35 is this number 0 0.0885. And all those numbers, once again, there are areas to the left of the corresponding z-scores. But here's another question. How do we find the probability that a z-score randomly selected from the standard norm no normal distribution is more than negative 1.35? So what does it mean more? Well, it means it's to the right. It's anything that's to the right. Well, so we need to kind of put it together. So anything to the right, it's over here, but then we need to find probability. Again, probability corresponds to the area on the normal curve. So in other words, we need to know area on the normal curve that's located to the right of negative 1.35. How do we find it? Um, keep in mind one more time that this table only gives us areas to the left. We can only use it for areas to the left of the corresponding z-score. It will never give us areas to, area to the right. But how do we find it? Well, here we have to remember the following. So, do you remember what's the total area on the no normal curve? We talked about it on the previous slide. So, what is the total area on the normal curve? Well, the total area is 1. If we know that the total area is 1, and we know that this portion is 0 0.0885, how do we find this white portion? By subtracting, right? So we need to take 1 and subtract 0 0.0885, and that's how we're going to obtain that probability.